Okay, guys, good golly, so many technical difficulties today. And now we need to wait for Jenny to, um, to join us. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I am ready for her if she's going to join me. All right. Awesome. Low battery mode. All right. We're just waiting on Jenny to join us. We will get this, um, hopefully, the tall and short of it, um, this week's conversation. Hey, there she is. Um, up and going. That's what happens when you have no school due to ice. Right. Hey. hey, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can me? hear you too. Woo! Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right. Huh. Just okay, saying, this is what come. happens when you have an ice day and no school. That's right. Not together. Oh, no. Now you look taller than me. I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're really going to throw You're people. You're taller today. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Well, we are so sorry. Ah. Hey, That's it's only 344. It's all right. We're still with them. We're still within our allotted time. That's right. That's right. Hopefully the people will come back. We have like six people. <laughs> well, I know everybody's at home for a, uh, like I said, a right day. That's right. So as we were saying, today we had an e-learning day due to inclement weather. So um, that is why we um, are not in the same spot today. Um, Betsy got to stay home all day. I went to work part of the day. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I did. I did my. I had some parents contact me. I did my. Your uh, office. Hours. Yeah. My office yeah. time. Yeah. So. Does anybody else love office hours? Hmm. Yay. Um, E-learning has a lot of mixed messages, I guess. But anyway, on to our topic of conversation. Welcome to the tall and the short of it with Jenny. And Betsy. And Betsy. That's right. So today we are talking about the where, where we're doing our social skills instruction. Hello. Oh, there's people on. Good. Yeah. Um, so the where is um, service delivery models for social skills instruction. So this is a, um, literally we could talk forever about. <laughs> this too, I think like we can talk forever about any topic. However. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of them. But um when um, like I said we were just having a conversation earlier on the phone about um, just different ways different schools do show social skills. So Betsy, what are some of the ways hey, we Kristen. do social skills at our school? Um, we have done in the past pull out groups. Um, we have, and then also like just I know I do it within my classroom um, every day, all day. Um, <laughs> And then also like going with the child to lunch or to recess um, because that's when, or special, especially picking um, those specials that have a lot more socialization within them um, or a lot more, like a lot less structure. Art and gym are the two mm -hmm. big ones that we would go to because that is typically when um, the social skills that maybe they do have <laughs> don't come out on their own. They need that, um, that help. So that is, I would say, um, the main mm -hmm. ways we've done it. And, and it is sure. often from year to year and from kid to kid, um, mm -hmm. or group to group, I should say, um, well, and our big question always is what's the best way. I mean, we're like to, I mean, if, is there a better way to tackle a certain social skill versus another social skill? Because there's such a wide variety of the different things we need to teach. Um, but I mean, in my ideal world, like I told you earlier, Bets, that um, hope everything would be done right in the classroom and they wouldn't have to have any pullout for those type of skills and instruction because we just all as a team, whoever was working with them throughout the day, be working on those social skills all together. And I just want to point out, Chris, and I still see that I believe you're still watching. 
We have a speed SLP on here. So if you have anything to yes. do, any input, Jessica was on here, but I don't see her now. But anyways, um, hop on if you have, um, because yes. you are definitely part of this conversation. Sorry, Kristen, for putting you on the spot. Um, <laughs> so because like Jenny said, this is a, we want to work as a team and SLPs are definitely part of um, that team. Typically, I shouldn't. Oh, we get a lot of our social skills uh, lesson ideas from speech language pathologists. That's what, the, I mean, that's their extra expertise is helping kids with language and, and the pragmatics of that and different social situations. They, they are far highly more qual. I mean, cause I don't remember, Betsy, did you take a class in college that was about teaching social skills? Cause I didn't. No, um, I don't the only, and I, I'm sitting here thinking, I may have not necessarily had social skills. I may have had something a little closer or talked about things like that. Sorry, Callaway's going to be joining us, I think. <laughs> Your cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe, but that's only because I had a minor in psych educational psychology. I think I took some things like that maybe dealt with like that, but not in teach, like not in my um, teaching, you know, it was oh. My minor, so yeah, they taught us pretty. Much, I'm pretty sure more about handwriting than they did about social skills and <laughs> instruction. Um, yes, but, and definitely, Kristen's saying social skills can be taught anywhere and everywhere. That's right. I just have, I can't see any of the comments. I'm here I say, can you see them? I can't see them at all. So you'll oh. have to see them if they come up. Um, but um, so let's talk about pull out groups for a second let's just just let's just say pull out groups okay what kind of social social you're gonna yeah. talk about that for a second and i'm gonna disappear and get my charger because for whatever reason my phone is down to like 10 percent. okay do so, that you okay, try talk about small groups. <laughs> <laughs> um so social skills appropriate for small group instruction um if you've got you know, here, here's my, I guess my big problem with pullout groups for social skill instruction is if you're going to do pullout groups, you want to make sure that they're a mix of kids who can be good models and kids who can't so that they have actual um, kids who know about good social skills in the group. Um, because you can't really do good video modeling or you can't really make good scripts or do role playing or things like that if you've got all kids that have no idea what to do. Um, so I really, I, a lot of times they'll say, oh, we have these four kids that need social skills instruction. Let's pull them out all in one group and do that. Well, that makes it really difficult on the teacher because none of the kids actually have the social skills to, um, to show and model as a peer. So I, I, that's just my own person. Again, Opinions are my own, but right. I just feel like it's much easier to do a group setting, even a small group setting, if you've got a couple of typical peers with a couple of kids that need that instruction. Yes. And I don't know. that is that, am I crazy? No. And I mean, <laughs> like I said, in my classroom, I teach social skills every day. So you can kind of look at it as a small group, but at the same time, it's something all my kids struggle with. So um, pulling in that um, typical model mm -hmm. um, can be difficult. And, and that's why you guys go out to PE or out to, right. so that you've and, got some of that. Right. And I mean, I use other things too. Um, like I'll bring in, like, like we talked about the video modeling and stuff. And I bring in some of the, we talked about that last week. Um, you know, and I bring some of, that in but yes it would definitely work i would like it to have more sure sure yeah i just think it, i just feel, feel like it would feel more natural if you have a couple of kids yeah. that um know how to take turns or know how to um be a good you know not win a game and not freak out or you know <laughs> right things. right so that you can talk about that together and everybody's in agreement that yes those are all good things that we should do yeah. Um, so you've got those good models. I don't know. I just, it's kind of how I feel about all that. Um, but then let's also talk about the kids who they're going to need a, instruction in a particular social skill, no matter where they are throughout the day. Right. So 
I think what we have to be careful about, and I, I think I mentioned this to Betsy earlier too, is just being really intentional about who is going to know whatever the plan is for working on this social skill throughout the day. So who is that going to be? Is it just going to be the general ed teacher and the special ed teacher? Or should it be the cafeteria worker know about the social skills plan so that they can reinforce those things at lunchtime? Should the recess duty person know the plan? Should the specials teacher know the plan? The SLP obviously should know the plan. You know, all of those people should know the plan for this child so we can reinforce those same skills throughout the day. And I know here in Indiana, we have like what's called IEP at a glance um, that we can pass out to all of these people at the beginning of the year, but that doesn't mean that all of them will look at it and say, oh, I should work on that right. <laughs> with kids. Well, so. and it's even important, though, I think, to have those conversations because, in a sense, you kind of need to model it as well for mm -hmm. everyone on the team or that's going to be a part of it because, again, you can miss it. You know, you don't want anything to be misinterpreted. It, you want yeah. to, like, this is how I want you to respond. Um, Right. right, Kristen, our SLP weighed in. Um, like Kristen said, I think it's a good idea to teach the particular social skill in a small group and then practice throughout the day with appropriate models. Consultation with all staff um, is imperative. And um, I like that, okay, because we back, let's back up to talk about um, when we were saying, you know, if they don't know how to do something, if they're not, it's because they don't know how. It's not necessarily because they're trying to be an awful person. So mm -hmm. I think that piece of like, okay, actual instruction on the skill. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. This is what mm -hmm. it does not look like. This is, um, you know, this is how it sounds. This is how all of those things I do. Um, you know, I do think that that is an important piece where that instruction, um, and I'm guessing, sorry, Kristen, I do not want to put words um in your mouth but like that piece of the actual instruction like here this is what this social skill looks like and then because you don't i guess pra practicing while you're out in those situations could lead to some other behaviors and that i did it wrong i'm embarrassed i'm mm -hmm. you know to do this successfully because we always want them to be successful i mean um right. obviously they're not always going to be but mm -hmm. Um, but also, I also really want to encourage any elementary teacher, if you've got a student working on a particular social skill in your classroom, you probably have six or seven others that need that too. So don't just think that only that kid needs it. You could do a lesson with the whole class on what that social skill looks like and, and, and there, support there those books skills. out there is a great way, books, to yes. a great way to introduce it and have a discussion about it. And, um, Patty, I know teachers do this stuff. Yeah, I know. Patty that. also said anyone who has contact with the student should be teaching social skills. And, you know, I agree. That's always something to, I think the important piece of it is, um, okay, Kristen says absolutely good. I'm not putting words in her mouth. Um, <laughs> I, um, I think the important piece, though, is we're looking at it as teaching, not, um, like a discipline a yeah yeah, yeah. Um, saying okay you know this I didn't I saw this is what I saw how do we let's right make and the consequence of us not talking to all the kids in their life um, that are see them at school that cafeteria worker that you know the bus duty person whoever is that they could be getting in trouble for things they don't know how to do mm -hmm. um, if we don't talk to those people so we just have to be very intentional like I said about who needs to know what roles um, each person's going to have um, as far as who's going to teach and reinforce, how are we going to teach it, um, who's going to progress monitor that, mm -hmm. and how is that going to look? Because, like I said, we can put a goal in there all day long, and we can talk to each other about how we think it's going, but do we really know how it's going if we don't really progress monitor that? Right. So, I mean, just like I said, it just has to be a plan. <laughs> and any like and anything is better than nothing so <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> you want to, you definitely do that. And I was going to um, kind of bring up an example I thought of, of a really good one that um, was kind of a stumper for the teacher. She wasn't really sure how to deal with it and not, you know, hurt this little girl's feelings. Um, we had a little girl who um, she just wanted teacher attention. Um, and so she would um, go up to the teacher and pull on her clothes and say, teacher, 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 you know, over and over and over again, whenever she wanted her attention. And even though if that teacher was working with another student or if, you know, the teacher was talking to an adult or who, whatever was happening, that little girl wanted that attention right now. And if she didn't get it right now, then meltdown ensues. So, yeah. you know, how to help her understand um, about wait time and waiting your turn and um, all of those kinds of things was, was a struggle for that teacher because she said, you know, seriously, if I don't talk to her right away when she comes up to me, then the next thing I know, she's on the floor in a meltdown. So, you know, wh what kind of intervention works for that? And you, you have to go back to behavior and you have to get, you know, so there's so much encompassing in a social skills thing like that, right. um, that it does deal with behavior. It deals with what's rewarding to her. It deals with, you know, what was the trigger for that? What was the, you know, and how do we still validate and acknowledge that this little girl needs or wants something right now, but at the same time help her understand that now is not the time and you have to wait. So that was a big like, ah. Um, well, and helping her understand too, sorry, but that waiting doesn't mean you're waiting an hour. Waiting can right. just, like it, chances are, it's just going to right. be a few minutes. Right. And I believe what we ended up coming up with was we're giving her um, a little token, like a popsicle stick or a sticky note or something that has her name on it. And whenever she wants the teacher's attention and the teacher is busy, because we tried to explain to her what busy is, what it means when the teacher is busy, she's talking to an adult or she's talking to another student or she's teaching. <laughs> you can't just walk up and talk to her and ask a question right in the middle of teaching. So teaching her what busy is, the teacher is busy right now. We wrote a social story and she has an item. And whenever the teacher is busy, she can hand the teacher that item. And then she has to go back to her seat or go back to playing or whatever she's doing. And then when the teacher is done, the teacher will hold up her token and say, it's your turn. So like we giving her, I am acknowledging I have your item and now it's your turn, you know, yeah. to just help her with that. So um, just a, a simple visual cue to help her know that the teacher knows I need her, but I can't have her right now. <laughs> right. So and if you missed it, we also talked about visual cues. Yes, we did. Last week. Yes, we um, did. And, so, and look at that. We worked a social story and a visual cue into that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like a lot of people on here that I, we haven't seen on our live. So if you guys are new, know that we are doing this every Thursday. This month, we're doing a monthly topic. This month is social skills. If you have questions, just ask. Um, Jake, um, Jenny, Jake is on here. Jake's she on? says hi. Oh my God. Hi, um, um, <laughs> Monica was on. I think she's still on. Hey, Monica. So if you guys have questions or anything like that, definitely ask. Um, mm -hmm. But I just kind of wanted to put that out there because it's a conversation. Uh, Jump in, talk. It's totally okay. Yes, yes. So, um, okay. Sorry, I was trying to catch up. I'm. I've even been responding while you've been chatting. So I'm. Um, Patty said, "There's a difference in teaching the skill and backing it up." Yes. Yeah. And um, I think it's important too. Like, obviously, everybody is different that the child is going to come in contact with in the within the school. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to me try to streamline how you are reinforcing that skill mm -hmm. because if they're struggling with social skills, they're going to be struggling with the um, like that spoken, you know, those cues that they may mess, miss. So maybe say, okay, everyone's going to give this child a thumbs up while they're praising them or, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of or using um, the same language kind of, you know. Right. I want, can you say something like using these, make sure you put this word in it or something. I and um, it's helpful that when you praise a student for a specific skill that you've taught them, um, 
you have to tell them why you're praising. I mean, you have to tell them why you can't just say, Oh my gosh, great. And move on. They have no idea why you just said that. Like, <laughs> um, our, our right. kids don't tend to pair. I got this reward because I just did this thing. They need to be told I'm giving you this reward, this tiger buck or this, whatever it is that I'm giving you because you used your good social skills. Remember when we learned the other day, you know, just making sure that they hear that and they understand that. And for those of you that don't know, tiger bucks are <laughs> bulls, like a whole school wide reward system. Yeah. Uh, lots of schools have different money token things. Yeah. yeah. That so, they do token economy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I had something. Now I lost it. Oh, I wanted to go back and kind of chat about, because we were talking about, like, it can be happening anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, and and I sh I'm not trying to speak for a general education teacher, because, uh, Monica, if you're still on here, maybe you pipe in, um, because I'm not a gen ed teacher. But, you know, we talk about, like, oh, you can, there are things that you can do in your class as well. And we're like, oh, you can teach a lesson here at you know, this, that, but at the same time, working on social skills doesn't mean um, that you're always having to like actually take time to do a lesson. It's mm -hmm. just even pointing out a, I, I don't ever want like a teacher to feel like, well, I'm not equipped to do that. I don't know. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, again, building that toolbox we talked about sure. a while ago, but um. But even like when Jenny said is reinforcing by saying exactly, um, you know, praising and saying exactly what they're being praised for, um, that is a lesson in and of itself because other kids are watching. Um, and I'm going to tell you one thing that I don't think, um, and I forgot a lot. I did as a teacher. I forgot to do this a lot. Thanking kids for doing what they're expected to do is actually something that increases positive behaviors in your classroom even though they're expected to do it we know they should it's kind of like people don't give you a cookie for waiting in line nicely at the bank but when you do that in a classroom thank you for raising your hand and not blurting out thank you for you know turning in your paper on time thank you for you know those thank yous go so far in changing behavior um because kids know that you appreciate that well and it's just like all of us <laughs> and, like um and making sure, I guess, you are reinforcing it in a way that is meaningful to that child. Some mm -hmm. of my kids do respond much better to that verbal praise. Some of them respond much better to me just handing them. I use dojo dollars in my classroom, handing them a dojo dollar. And I mean, I, I tell them why they're getting it, but mm -hmm. um, doing it. Because if, if you're praising them or thanking them or doing it, and that means nothing mm -hmm. um, to them, then... Um, <laughs> it's not really reinforcing. Make sure you're using something that's reinforcing to them. Kind of mm -hmm. like the whole uh, five love languages. <laughs> kids have them too. And kids have them too, huh? Kids Maybe have I them too. That. There actually is a book about kids' love languages, but. Is there really? Yeah. So. Oh something uh, else to read. <laughs> what? I said something oh, yeah. else to read. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> Yeah, some kids are more reinforced by, like, a dojo dollar, an actual, you know, something like that, where others are more, they need that verbal praise or, you know, a high or they would just love to have lunch with their favorite person in the school or um, it, it's different for every kid who that would be. Um, so going from, you know, talk, let's talk a little bit about upper level kids, too, because, like, when we're talking about secondary kids, you're not going to want to pull them out to do stuff unless they're already in a self-contained environment. You know, if they're already in a self-contained environment, you just do it right in the classroom. But there are kids at the middle school and high school level that are going to need to work on social skills because maybe their skills are a little lacking in certain areas, especially interrupting is a big one. Um, some still tattle even at that level. Um, some will, um, say inappropriate or mean things, um, and they don't know that they're rude. Um, that happens with kids on the spectrum sometimes. 
Um, so those kinds of, of things are definitely something where if that kid has some resource time or if that kid has some time where you need to sit down and really have a conversation with them. Um, but keep it short, keep it simple language, keep it, you know, what, what do we need to do about this? And then hold them accountable for that. You know, now we've talked about this, now you know this, and we're going to practice this. And I'm going to ask your teachers tomorrow and really do it. Like, don't just say that and not do it. <laughs> right. Know, I'm going to ask teachers tomorrow, did you do that? Um, like we practiced and, and then the next morning, check in with them first thing. Hey, what did we practice yesterday? What are you going to do today? I'm going to ask your teachers. Again, putting that right back in their head mm -hmm. of, you know, we need to practice that skill today. But like I said, we or things like that to um, be pulling them out for social skills. That doesn't mean it's not important. Um, sometimes, and then sometimes it's not the special ed teacher who's the best person to talk to them about it. Sometimes it's their coach. Sometimes. Right. I mean, I can think of how many kids did we have, Betsy, that, you know, you stick the wrestling coach on them if they're not doing what they're supposed to do in school because they loved wrestling and they respected him. So right. he was the one to teach that we're not going to behave like that. Or right. We're not, or we're going to change this social aspect of well, your behavior. Or even another teacher in the building that may be um, ha like a specials teacher that they don't see as often and can reinforce those skills that because it's just a comment from them is so much what well, sorry you're talking about older kids too but I mean a class that you know their favorite class their favorite teacher yeah it be a lot more reinforcing to get totally um and I think a big one we have to continually work on and you may not think this is a social skill but it totally is is hygiene <laughs> as they get older oh my gosh so <sighs> You have to be okay with having that conversation with them if they smell or if they aren't getting their hair clean or they're, you know, they're not wearing deodorant or whatever. You have to be okay with talking to them about it. And, and yeah, it's an uncomfortable conversation for them sometimes, but you take it from the standpoint of, you know, this is a life skill that you have to have to get a job and keep a job. And, you know, just that, that social skill in and of itself is huge. And we deal with it quite a bit at our high school. Well, and if you think about how uncomfortable it sure. may be for you, think about them long term. Um, <laughs> Jake says we were both her favorites. Uh, <laughs> and remind, Kristen, when we're done with this, Kristen has a really good comment I want to read. Okay. But um, Think about the down the road. It's it's uncomfortable for you and that student, but it's going to be a hundred times more uncomfortable daily as that student is hearing comments and um, right. from his peers. <laughs> Absolutely, and and that's what that's the part that it's hard for you as a teacher to help them understand at first is that the reason he doesn't want to sit by you is because you smell. Right. You know, and you have to be honest with them about it. You have to say. And, and sometimes I've had, had to literally look a child in the face and say, when I walked into my classroom from the hallway, I knew you were here because I can smell you. And that's not a good thing. So right. we have to take care of that, you know? Um, and like I said, we just have to be okay with those conversations when we teach older kids because they happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back to Kristen's comment. Okay. Um, she said, I think for educators and anyone working in a school, it is somewhat our comfort zone and feel students should naturally learn what to do in situations but for many kids it does not come naturally so small steps of challenging yourself each week so she says for this week I'm going to focus on my students eye contact or interrupting in the hallway and then next week um, the lunchroom and so on small yeah. steps help to get out of your comfort zone because it can be overwhelming too to think about oh my gosh like this child has you know, so many social skills to work on. And so there, if you're going to, like Kristen said, I'm going to focus on the eye contact or uh, I'm going to focus on interrupting, um, you know, those that way. And, and I feel like, like for me, if I focus on that throughout my classroom, I'm not in a sense picking on a student. We are going to look at it as a class. And I right. could see that happening just in a general ed classroom and, right know, general a general edge classroom in general um you well, know I, I like that yeah that that's really 
Why isn't she on here with us? <laughs> I wish we could be. Janelle. Janelle's on here too. Huh? I said Janelle popped on here too. Marianne was. I don't know if she's still on. Hey. So. Um, another social skill that I know I used to target a lot in middle school is just participating. Oh my gosh. The, the really quiet kid that's very uncomfortable with participation, finding a way for them to participate in small group work and, you know, in the whole class when we do things and just encouraging them and really, you know, showing them that they have a voice and things like that. Those, those are the kids who we definitely want to focus on. You don't want to, just because the kid's good and they're quiet, you want to, you want to talk to them. You want to know what's going on with that kid. Kristen says Allison was on here too. I think she's trying. He to was. I didn't. I missed her. Aw. We were hoping does... to have us today, but then e-learning happened. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Well, does anybody else have anything they want to add for today? Because I think we've kind of done this topic out. Um, we uh, are not on live next week because we will all be stuffing our faces. Um, for Thanksgiving and but we'll post some resources um, throughout the week of course as always and um, then we will wrap it up with next week's topic is the um, the when when the when when my child when when you when a child doesn't have any friends yeah so okay. to do I, could, I was gonna say look I yeah <laughs> it's the one about friendships and helping kids develop friendships. And um, because I think the number one thing I hear um, in a case conference from parents when, when we ask about concerns, other than they're reading or they're not getting good grades, is I don't feel like he has any friends or he doesn't have any friends or he tells me he doesn't have any friends. So um, that's a huge thing for people. Um, to, to, kids need to feel like they belong to something and that they're a part of the school community. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of dive into that a little bit more and I'll post some things um, leading up to that. Well, and something I want to definitely post that doesn't necessarily, it kind of goes along with, I could, but we talked about, I said books, we talked about books being a good way. Oh, books, yeah. I'll post some of the books that I have and love and or some yes. authors that have really good books too. Yeah, you do books. Yes. To go along with that. But Jake oh, hopes we have a good Thanksgiving and she was glad she was able to pop on here. Yay. And do, don't don't forget, you guys are all welcome to comment anytime and oh, yeah. up yourselves. Like there's no, I didn't put anything on this site that keeps you from posting um, on it. So please, we want visitor posts. Um, um, to add to the conversation for sure. Um, and if you're watching this on replay, make sure you can give us a hashtag replay so we know you watched and we'll be signing off for today. All right. That was the tall and the short of it. Bye guys. Bye guys.